Um, good morning, US. Um, good evening, South Africa. Good morning, New Zealand, Australia. In last week's video, I talked about the good side of being assisted to eat and drink. This week in particular, I want to talk about the bad side of being assisted to eat and drink. Particularly if the person is much, much older than you, they have potential ways and beliefs about them, how food should be served, how food should be given, how you should ingest the food. Um, but yeah, our chief concern uh, for me in this week's video is to talk about food hygiene, make sure the person washes their hands, make sure the person is comfortable feeding you, make sure the person doesn't feed you too fast or too slow. Uh, you do get that, especially when the person doesn't think that they are an extension of you. Um, they will either feed you too slow because they will be having their conversation if it's a big uh, company or family gathering or they will either try and feed you too fast because they want to go and watch their TV program or they will not cut. If you are lucky enough like me, um, sometimes the person won't cut enough of the food so that you can skew it with a fork. Also something that is very important to look out for is that the person is not already eating before you have started eating because the people with annoying habits, they will eat and you can hear them crunching but as they're carrying your plate of food towards you, you can hear them crunching and there's going to come a day where the person is going to accidentally spit and the sputum is going to land in your food. Not wishing it on you but it has happened and will continue to happen. Um, the things that you should condone is definitely drinking and smoking, particularly if you are a social drinker, or part particularly if you are a smoker. It just makes it easier to hire somebody that is like-minded to get somebody that is like-minded because not all of us, myself included, can afford to hire somebody exclusive. So we kind of look at a peer support system, so if your body smokes and you can also have a smoke. Um, alcohol, uh, just make sure that they can control their drink uh, because more than likely they will be driving for you and being on your behalf as well. Look, <laughs> look, I know I should be all good boy and say uh, get, um, get a sober chauffeur, but the reality is sometimes again you can't afford those amenities, and so peer support is the way to go. So just make sure that the person has some form of moral code and is hygienically inclined. Um, on social things and ride share, uh, have patience with Uber drivers that don't always know how our wheelchairs work or mobility equipment works. Um, and unfortunately, you're going to get the Uber driver who is also a preacher who wants you to get up and walk. Allow him to talk, allow him to, and converse with him. If he quotes scripture back to you, quote scripture back to him. Um, because Uber driver is a so Uber driving is a social experience as well. Much like we rate the driver, the driver also rates us as the passenger. And the higher your Uber score, the quicker a driver will come to your aid. <clears throat> Again, I'm gonna say this: be careful of uh, when you're eating and drinking that the person is not chewing before you have eaten, because that might let something slip into your food as well. Yeah? Um, just make sure that the person that's doing the cooking on that is also not too old to have some meal or become repetitive and not as enjoyable as it should. <clears throat> Particularly what I like about our kitchen setup is that when my mother is in charge, she will set up the slow cooker or the pressure cooker or the air fryer so that I can press the button at the appointed time so that dinner is ready when I need it to be. Also then making me part of the family, part of the household, having that response. Even if I have to set the uh, OK Google timer or something like that. 
that is maybe how you should look at um, doing things um, yeah with regard to smoking if you can't light your own cigarette I highly suggest um, teaching somebody to hold the lighter for you so that you can lean into the flame to light your cigarette um, remember it's a gross motor function to light to hold your cigarette but to light your cigarette to keep the balance it's a bit of a fine trick so maybe you want to cock your head to the side and just catch the flame like that also keep the lighter slightly sideways when you strike um, just to prevent from burning nose, ears or skin um, yeah um, as long as you puff um, uh, gently puff so that you don't um, you know you don't need as big of a flame to get the cigarette lit I think um, that's where I'm gonna leave it thanks for all the support and all the views please continue subscribe click like one like is up to one one like gives me up to 100 views and subscription just makes it a lot easier for me to see what you guys want